Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is a stance that the Christian makes. However, the Jew does not see that as the case. The divine nature of Jesus Christ was stolen when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and the priests of that day bribed the guards to say that his followers actually stole his body. When Peter in the book of Acts preached on the day of Pentecost to a huge crowd of Jews, he preached the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and identified Jesus Christ as the Messiah who was spoken of by Isaiah in Isaiah 53. Pilate had inscribed over Jesus' head on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Jesus Christ is the promised Savior that was given to Abraham when his wife was barren for her entire life. The Old Testament is vital to the understanding of New Testament Christianity fulfilled by Jesus Christ. I've included a clip of John MacArthur, a conservative Christian theologian, speaking with Ben Shapiro concerning the difference between Christianity and Judaism. John starts out by giving the entire purpose of the Christian message. Let's listen to him. The whole purpose of the Christian message is to confront the sinner's sin so you can call the sinner to repentance and forgiveness. The sinner doesn't like that. Says, Look, my goal is to offend everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that is my initial goal, to tell you that you are without God in the world, that there's only one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, that you're in sin, that sin brings death and punishment, but the good news is Jesus Christ is the Savior who has provided a way for you to be forgiven by bearing your sins in his body on the tree so that God's justice is satisfied and his love can be extended to you by putting your trust in Christ. If you try to develop a kind of Christianity that's inoffensive, it's not Christianity. It's not the gospel. When it comes to the distinctions between Judaism and Christianity, as a Jew, whenever I hear pastors speak about Christianity, very often I think to myself, right, all that stuff's in the Old Testament. And so when they say things like, you know, sin has to be cleansed by God, right? We have an entire day, Yom Kippur, that is for that. I say uh, three times a day, a paragraph about uh, doing repentance before God, plus an additional section for repentance in the morning prayers. Uh, the, the idea of, of repenting and confessing your sins before God is something that, that is endemic to Judaism and has been for, for thousands of years. Uh, the idea that you know, God is sovereign, obviously, the two religions share. So the same God who wrote the Old Testament wrote the New Testament. That's my conviction. The, the scripture has one author. Uh, and I need to say this, I am a Christian because of the Old Testament. Without the Old Testament, I, I don't know whether I could believe the New Testament. And that may sound strange to you, but how do I know that Jesus is the Messiah if I don't have all the predictions of the Old Testament defining him when he shows up. And you read Isaiah 53, and it's, it's the biography of the Messiah, the servant of the Lord, um, and it, it's, it lays out his arrival um, and his rejection and his death and his resurrection and his ascension and his coronation. It explains the gospel in more specific terms than any chapter in the New Testament. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace fell on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Wow, that sounds like the Christian doctrine of justification because that's exactly what it is. And then it says his life was cut off, and then it says he will see his offspring. Well, if his life was cut off, how could he see his offspring? When I die, I'm not going to see my offspring. That's the resurrection. And then you have the coronation. He, we saw him and he was like a root out of dry ground. He was like a, a, a root sticking up you would trip over. He was like a sucker branch. You whack it off. He was meaningless, useless. And there was no beauty that we would desire him. He didn't fit our messianic picture. And uh, he, he didn't do what we thought he would do. He didn't knock off the Romans and he didn't set up the kingdom. Um, he just didn't fit our model. And so we, we considered him as nothing. And the, the language there, they considered him as non-existent. 
And that's exactly what happened because they completely rejected him and the Romans took him in, as a criminal and crucified him. And then you have this stunning reality in that chapter. It's like time stops and you hear this in the past tense. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace. Whoa, what happened? Zechariah says, the day will come when they look on him whom they've pierced and mourn for him as an only son. Wow, that's what they will say. Well, that's what the Jewish people will say when they look on the one they pierced and mourn for him as an only son. They'll say, we thought he was stricken by God. We thought we were doing the work of God in taking his life because he was a blasphemer. Now we see he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And then, says Zechariah, a fountain of blessing is open to Israel and a fountain of salvation. And then you have that followed by the kingdom and all the fulfillment of the old covenant. And all of it comes when Israel looks at the Messiah and sees him for who he is. The interesting thing about Isaiah's prophecy of that is he doesn't say it's going to happen. It's, he doesn't use future verbs. He uses past verbs because he's looking past Christ to when the Jews look back on the past. Now we see it. Now we see it. And the New Testament, Paul says in Romans 11, all Israel will be saved. You can't tell me that God made promises in the Old Testament to his people Israel concerning his future kingdom and salvation and that he would give them a heart, a new heart and a new spirit, and he would write his laws in their heart and they, they would be saved and he would be their king and they would be his people and all those kingdom prophecies. You can't possibly tell me that God didn't mean what he said. We serve a God who cannot lie. Men lie, but God does not lie. When John said that Jesus was seen as absolutely nothing, totally marginalized as if he wasn't even existing by the leaders of his day, this is exactly what a socialist system plans on doing to eradicate even the thought of Jesus Christ with the people who they want to subjugate in this period of time. It is the purpose of this channel to present the risen Lord, the God of all creation, the love of God through his son, Jesus Christ, to you and the rest of the world, so that you could have your mind fixed on the truth of Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. So for the assurance of salvation, repeat Romans 10 verse 9 with me right now. I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And according to Romans 10, verse 10, I am saved. Remember, every Wednesday a new video comes out on this channel declaring the love of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, for you personally and the rest of the world. Like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with everyone. God bless you.